Hi, everybody. Jason Smith here. Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Truth About Social Ads. I'm an agency owner specializing in Facebook and Instagram ads, and I have dedicated my professional life to helping you learn what others won't tell you about Facebook ads. You know, I believe there's so much information that no one is sharing about Facebook ads and how you can fail and win running ads for your business and when it's time to hire an agency. That's why I'm here bringing ideas and information that can help you run successful Facebook and Instagram ads. Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to the Truth About Social Ads podcast. Uh, Today we have a super cool episode. We're actually going to be talking about our team today so the audience can get to know our team and each one of us, kind of how we function. Definitely want to give the audience a a story and a bio behind each one of our team members. And I'm uh, I'm super excited. So uh, we have Eric on the call. We have Hugo and Ms. Ayel. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Oh, good. Amazing. Man. I'm doing amazing. Awesome. Well, hey, guys, thanks for uh, for being on the episode today. I, I appreciate it. I think this is going to be pretty cool. I, I don't know about you guys. When people or businesses do podcasts in general, I don't really ever hear an episode like this. I mean, what about you guys, Eric? I know Eric's a big podcaster, so he may have heard some stuff like this, but I thought it was a cool idea just to get the whole team on the call to make sure that everybody gets to know us as a as a team and as a company and stuff. So Eric, have you heard of anything like this? I haven't heard it before. Yeah, me either. Uh, Ms. Isle and Hugo, are you guys big podcast listeners, right? I mean, you guys listen to a bunch of podcasts. Have you ever heard of an episode like this where like they bring the whole team in and we just kind of chat? Um, no, usually it's just one or two guys, right? It's not a whole team. So yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I, I, I don't hear much about the team either. It's, uh, it's like, you know, like a bunch of other podcasts. Um, You have the guests and you have the host. Yeah, yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah, well, today you guys are you, today you guys are the guests. That's pretty cool. <laughs> awesome. So honored. So, yeah. So what I want to do is just kind of go. I want each one of you guys to introduce yourself and to let the audience know who you are. A quick bio. You know, we all have unique stories. I mean, I know I. I think I'm. I'm really done talking about myself, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't want to talk about myself anymore. That's why I want you guys to talk about uh, individually your stories and, and kind of give us a quick rundown of what you do here at Spotlight Social and, you know, how you help out and kind of maybe some of our clients. So Eric, why don't you go first and uh, give the audience a little spiel uh, about who you are and let's hear it, man. Okay, cool. So yeah, really excited to do this episode. And kind of also highlight certain things in the podcast that Jason probably won't say about himself if we get there, hopefully. And um, as far as my background, so I was a pro skateboarder. I skated for Santa Cruz Skateboards, uh, skateboarded since I was eight years old, turned pro, had a very short career. But, you know, Santa Cruz Skateboards, if anyone's ever heard of it, is... Oh, yeah, I have. It's a very solid business. You know, there's there's a lot of companies that, you know, get a hot flash for a minute and then go away. But, you know, they've been in business for 30 years. So it was a really solid business that I got to see and experience. And that was a lot of fun. Traveled around the world, did that. And then when my career came to an end, I had connected with many of you have heard of the company OGO. So OGO, it kind of became really big recently and they're doing really well, but I was there when they were kind of finding their feet in marketing. I was there for five years. I started managing the skateboard team. And by the end, I, the, the last year I was there, I managed key accounts for Best Buy, Sports Chalet and Target. And the cool thing about that was I got a really good glimpse of how the supply chain works. So um, I got a glimpse of this is how it's how a backpack's designed. This is how it's sent to China. This is the team that imports it from China. And I was responsible for those three key accounts, their pilot programs, all the way from production to the shelves 
to sell through and everything. So that was a great experience. Got to do a lot of marketing and also work with some of the pro athletes that I had grown up skateboarding with. Paul Rodriguez, Mikey Taylor, these these were my friends growing up, that they were on the team. And uh, just a really cool experience. After that, I started doing social media. And with with OGO, they just cut their DNA just kind of didn't fit in in skateboarding and they, they closed down the program. So I had to go do something else. And I started doing social media. So I was doing, you know, broadcasts for for pro skateboarders with their social media, right when, you know, YouTube was doing live streaming for the first time and stuff like that. Cool. Uh, how much of a bio do you want here? I got, I got like another minute. You want me to keep going? Hey man, keep, keep going, <laughs> dude. Uh, this is interesting. This is pretty cool. I've actually, I don't think I've ever heard this whole story. So go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, at, at that point, uh, I remember there was one moment at OGO. We did a test with journeys and this was at the height of, of retail right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. We did this test. We got two backpacks into journeys. They didn't sell. You, you know, you see on, on paper the numbers, but when you walk into a warehouse and you see, I think it was $500,000 worth of backpacks sitting there that were returned back. And I remember going, okay, I want to do something digital. I don't want a warehouse and I don't ever want, you know, that to happen to me. <laughs> so that was where yeah. I decided I loved digital. I wanted to do something with marketing and digital. And that was kind of my push in that direction. So that after that, I started doing the social media for, you know, if you guys know skateboarding, Nija, he's going to probably win the Olympics. He's one of the best skateboarders, managed his social media, Paul Rodriguez, Mikey Taylor, and then from there, I had to figure out how to monetize that. So yeah. I was a big fan of Mixergy. Uh, Andrew Warner, I know I've seen uh, some of the guys Jason knows, uh, like Jason Swank uh, with um, Andrew Warner. So yeah. I, I said, I need to know how to do this stuff. So I drove to San Francisco to one of Andrew Warner's Mixergy events. Tim Ferriss was there and I was just blown away. And at the end, you know, it ends and there was a hundred people at the event and they were filming it. And, you know, Andrew was standing there. I'm like, dude, no one's talking to him. So I went <laughs> up and talked to Andrew Warner and he was like, just couldn't stop talking. This is what you do. And I was like, how do I build a membership site? This is a w long time ago. Yeah. He told me how to do it. This is what you do. You know, WordPress install. And that's where digital marketing for me was born. Um, awesome. That's kind of where I started learning about it. And then from there, just I, I'm the guy who's, you know, worked as a server and tried to do pretty much everything. Um, I've cold called Dennis, which is a big part of why I understand what we do here at Spotlight, working partially with doctors and then, you know, more so e-commerce clients with their ads. Yeah. But, you know, background in doctors, I cold called in the San Fernando Valley for a year and a half and, you know, had a very successful sales uh, close rate there. And then... um Fast forward, I connected with Jason through my family, actually. And yep. I skipped a lot there, so I, I may mention something else real quick here. But connected with Jason amongst the digital marketer frenzy. <laughs> and it's funny because that's really why I love this team and love what we're doing. Because, you know, I was getting a lot of the, you know, I've, I've watching click funnels, watching yeah. you know, the Lambo rental influencers and just going, <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. You know? Yeah. I just, so when I connected with Jason, I was like, Hey, the, the, this is the guy. And I, you know, he told me who had trained him. And I was like, these are the guys behind the scenes, making this happen, running the ads, looking at, you know, the, the return on ad spend, all this stuff that we do every single day. And I, I was just like, I, I got to be a part of this. So yeah. as soon as I met Jason, I kind of realized, you know, I was doing video and website work, which anybody who knows that knows whether you're a very small independent or a $10 million agency, it can be feast or famine because they're, it's project work. It comes, or it comes and goes. Yep. And that was one of the coolest things is seeing Jason's skill set and going, okay, how, how do I be a part of this team? Th th this is amazing what he's doing. So that's kind of my background and how I connected with Jason. I handle operations and customer relations. And 
yeah, that's a- anything else I left out there that you think I should add in. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's funny cause well, I, I appreciate all that, uh, Eric, because, um, and, and we're very fortunate to have you on the team. Um, and, uh, man, you're like a total hustler, dude. Like, you know, you, when you tell me you're going to get something done, it gets done like no questions asked. Um, you know, and, and you're, you're like the, the dude who's always on Slack, right? It's like, yeah, I mean, it's funny because you remind me of me and it's like, you know, at midnight I can drop a message and not, not expecting anybody to respond. And Eric's like, yeah, dude, I got it. You know? And uh, I'm like, dude, you know, so it's pretty awesome to have you uh, as part of the team. I, I do appreciate all your work and, and your background is awesome too. I, I love it. Uh, as I talked about in my, my first episode, I was used to race motocross and I love doing all, all that stuff too. Although never, really was good at skateboarding but yeah man i mean and and maybe touch a little bit on what we're doing uh here as a team uh we all work remotely right like so when when hugo and misael uh introduce themselves you know we don't work in an office we all work at our homes we work remotely and i love it i know eric's really good at it hugo is in misael and it takes a certain person to work from home i think and i think right now in the whole corona pandemic people have been forced to work from home And I think they're starting to realize it's not as easy as what they think it is. Right. Yeah. And Eric does a phenomenal job with operations for spotlight and, uh, he's, he's on it. He, uh, I do not like systems and processes. And Eric's like, is always on me about that. Like, Nope, Jason, we got to put a system in place and we got to do this. And, uh, so I'm grateful for that. So Eric, maybe talk a little bit about like the dynamic of the team and what you've what you've experienced so far being a part of the team and kind of how we function daily and, and all that good stuff really quick. For sure. So that was actually one of the things that perplexed me about when I first was introduced to you is how did you learn how to do this remotely? And I mean, you know, your background having worked with Ralph Burns at tier 11 and, and the the level of training that you got, it, it was it was mind blowing seeing how you put together this team remotely. And I couldn't understand it for a while because I've never seen it really work successfully before until now. Yeah. And that's actually how I learned. So I got for sure. most, of my, most of my knowledge from working with tier 11. Yeah. And it was really crazy to watch because you're like, yep, this is what we do. We jump on calls. And now the, the whole rest of the world understands that. But yeah. I mean, as far as successful companies pulling off work from home before coronavirus, not that many were able to successfully do it. And nope. so it involves a lot of organization. It involves us, you know, all being on certain programs. Obviously, we use Slack to communicate. Um, we have channels in there with all of our clients. And it's really funny because one thing I'll touch on is, you know, like Jason mentioned, we'll be working super late, but maybe we'll go into more in a minute talking about the boss. But It's funny, man, because one thing I've noticed is that Jason is the person who can outwork anybody. And in fact, it's funny because a lot of times they'll be like, can you do this? And then at first, like I I wouldn't respond for like an hour because I was eating food and then I'd go and it's done. And I'm like, dude, uh, is he mad at me? Nope. Jason (laughs) just gets it done, man. So yeah, that that's one thing. And I'm going to highlight you a little bit because that's not going to happen in a lot of your episodes. So when we, we get to do it, we're going to take the chance. Cool, man. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm de- so, definitely not afraid of work. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing is that there there's no micromanaging. It's just Jason, in my opinion, is successful because he's looking up and he's like, guys, we're going up. This is where we're going. And it, it's not stomping on people. It's lifting everybody else up too. So as far as operations, we function very well through Zoom. It was when when coronavirus hit, I saw everyone else adjusting to it, and I'm like, ah, oh, nothing yeah. changed except I can't go outside as much now. You know, right? Like, yeah, I don't go yeah. out to eat. So exactly, we and were all yeah. ready for it. Uh, systems in place, and that's the overview of how we operate. Yeah, well, thanks to you, systems are in place because <laughs> before you came, there were no systems, and I just basically had everything in my head and you know, and then you had everything in your head and we just had to work it out. So, but yeah. And then, you know, Slack is obviously an important part of our business and we are uh Slack communicators. Um, we use that, you know, probably too much sometimes making fun of each other and joking around and, and, uh, all that good stuff, but cool, man. Well, thanks for that. I, I, I appreciate it. I think, uh, 
the listeners uh, have a little bit better idea of what Eric does. Um, so let's uh, let's move on to Hugo. Hugo, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Awesome. Glad well, I, I, I will I'll say this: we you know we all, since we all work remotely, Hugo um, is in the beautiful country of Portugal, and uh, we make fun of him all the time because he's always like, "I'm going to the beach," and I'm like, "Dude," <laughs> you know. So. Anyways, uh, Hugo, yeah, uh, Hugo does our, he's our copywriter. He does all our ad copy, helps us out with creatives and any type of copywriting stuff he does. And we're super grateful to have him on the team. So Hugo, why don't you uh, tell us a little about yourself and your background and how you came across to us and how we started working together. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, this is my uh, first podcast. And like Eric, he's the god in here, right? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm from Portugal, and I've been a copywriter for, uh, I don't know, maybe six years now, I guess, six, seven years. Yep. And uh, part of the job is to study our client's audience, as well as their mm -hmm. service and products, and then create ads that attract the right people and make them take action. doesn't yeah. matter if it's following your page, register, registering for a, an event, or buying a product. Yeah, before that, I did a bunch of stuff. I... Uh, I worked as a marketer in the wine industry, so I, I was doing all the time, of course. And um, I'm kidding, by the way. <laughs> uh, and I also gave, uh, yeah, I gave math, Portuguese, and basic science lessons to um, to fifth graders when I was uh, wow trying cool. to pay. Yeah, when I was trying to pay for college, you know, I, I needed to get some money, so I would do whatever. I needed to do to get the money, right? So uh, yeah, for sure. I know how that is. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, I was uh, I worked as a marketer for a, a while, but uh, it got boring after a while. I, I I don't think I'm I was meant to do that. Uh, I I like the creative side of things, and I always loved uh, ads and writing. So I, I took a chance. I took a chance. I, I studied copywriting on my own, and then I took a few awesome. courses and. Uh, I got a few, a few gigs from friends of mine who needed some blog <laughs> articles done, and um, wow. yeah, after that it was just referral after referral, and uh, eventually I met you guys uh, again. This time I was referred by uh, Deacon, right from Tier Eleven. Yeah, yep, Deacon uh, was just on the podcast. So yeah, here I am now. I'm loving it, and uh, it's interesting to. To be to to work remotely, right? because in Portugal, you know, we don't have that culture. Yeah, I, I tried to, you know, find a job, a full time job in Portugal, like a few years ago. I wanted to work as a copywriter for a co for companies, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, because uh, you, you guys don't know this, but I'll, I'll 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 tell you about it just a little bit. So I have this um, health condition that uh, I'm getting blind, so I can't drive. I've been losing sight since my 18 years old. So, wow. uh, yeah. So after working for a few years as a marketer, I was working on a, it was a, a small town and I had to drive, but I knew I was risking my life every day because I, you know, when, when in Portugal, when they, they give you a, a job like from nine to six, it's never nine to six. It's always nine to, you know, 8 PM or 9 PM. So it, it. All, it was always nighttime when I left work. And sometimes I didn't know how that I got home because I couldn't see much, right? Wow. So, wow. yeah. So, yeah, after wow, a few years, I uh, I just decided that, uh, well, first of all, I wasn't that excited about, you know, about being a marketer. I wanted to do something more creative. I wanted to be a copywriter. I knew I wanted to be yeah. a copywriter. So, I, I left uh, that uh, company. I took a master's in marketing, but towards digital marketing because I, I needed to learn more about that. Right. And um, yeah, eventually I got a few gigs, I got referrals and uh, here I am, man. Wow. That's, um, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. We, I, we did not know that. I don't, I don't think any of us did. So no, um, I didn't know that Hugo. Yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy. So what is it? Have you been diagnosed with something officially or? Yes. Yeah, so people think, I mean, I've been to a bunch of doctors and they, they think it's uh, this disease called uh, Usher Usher syndrome. I think that's uh, how it's spelled. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. And um, yeah, basically, it's uh, yeah, it's a chronic disease. There's no cure, so 
it basically has been it has been took, uh, taking my side away since I was I don't know sixteen when I started noticing it. But I could, wow. I could still do a lot, right? I, I did it all. I had a great uh, great life uh, yeah. when I was younger. I, I could play football. I could go, you know. To parties, I could do whatever I wanted as a as a kid. But then, yeah. you know, when uh, yeah, when you're a grown up and you need a car to drive everywhere, pretty much, uh, yeah, that that's when things got a bit complicated. So I needed to figure out a way to uh, to work if I could from home, and that, that's the thing that Portugal was not ready to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I, I yeah, I, I tried wow. to get a few dates from from Facebook groups, you know. That yeah. people who were looking for copywriter or for blogger, uh, yeah, blogger, bloggers, and uh, yeah. Wow. Well, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you're a part of the team. That's uh, that must be, you know, kind of scary. You know, obviously. And uh, actually, my so my brother's son, his wife, um, she has the same type of of disease. Um, and actually, she's how old is she now? I think she's 22 or 23, and she is legally blind right now. She she started losing her sight too when she was 12 uh, yeah. and uh, and it's just been getting worse and worse. And when I first met her, it, it was kind of weird for me because she came and she looked me at my face like really close, you know, to see who I was. And I was like, whoa. And they're like, oh, we forgot to tell you she's like legally blind, you know? And I'm like, oh my gosh, like not a big deal, but I was just like, whoa, get out of my space. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it happened and it's you know we we play a lot of card games and stuff and she has to have the cards like literally right in front of her face and um <laughs> well so what's the what's the prognosis with that i mean do they tell you uh like are you gonna be like have zero eyesight and then what is the prognosis there i mean what do they tell you yeah so i've been to a doctor that says that i, I will yeah i will definitely go full blind totally blind mm -hmm. you know and uh, then i've been to Another doctor that says I'll never get totally blind, but I'll definitely, you know, have very little sight. Yeah. So yeah, because I, I don't, so, so I can read fine. The mm -hmm. problem is my um, my side vision, right? My peripheral. How do you say peripheral? Yeah. Per peripheral vision. Yeah. Yeah. Peripheral vision. Yeah. yeah. So that that's the problem here. Uh, Got um, it. And, and of course, I'm so. For that reason, I can't drive and I can't do a bunch of stuff. And, uh, you know, going to busy places with a lot of people to be crowds is a mess because I bump into people. Oh, got <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that uh, that takes a bit, a bit of, you know, of my confidence away when I have to yeah. go to meetings and all that. So being able to work from home, uh, it's, it's amazing for me, right? Wow, that's awesome. Well, well, we uh, we appreciate you opening up and sharing that. I know it's not sometimes not always easy to to open up about those things. Um, but thank you for sharing that. That's, uh, yeah, of course. Awesome. No yeah, problem. We, I, we had, because we had no clue and no, you would have never no. known. So <laughs> and no. you go write some mean ad copy. Yeah, he does, man. He cranks it out. Like it, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Hugo's definitely a, a force to be reckoned with, uh, you know, as far as Facebook ad copy goes and, and Hugo, you can attest to this. I think, you know, Facebook ad copy is definitely unique. It's not like any other type of ad copy you're going to write, right? Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the way the way we write it, it's not, you know, grammar doesn't have to be perfect, you know, and that may make you cringe a little bit being a copywriter. But, you know, we can do things writing Facebook ads that you don't necessarily do when you're writing an email or, you know, sales copy or, or something like that. There's, uh, there's a little bit more wiggle room. But... Um, they say that you need to write ad copy so that people can recognize the words or the paragraphs like without almost even reading it, you know? So yeah. um, that's super important. But no, man, you you crush it. Uh, we're grateful to have you uh, here as a part of the team. And, you know, as far as your condition goes, please, you know, let us know if we can ever do anything for you. And we're we're on it, man. So, Man, no problem, man. Yeah, I, I just thought I'd share because it's part of the reason that I, I decided to be a copywriter. Right? <clears throat> yeah, so, thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah. Sir, thank you. That's so cool. Um, all right, cool. Well, uh, Hugo, again, thank you. Uh, we appreciate your your uh, you know your team spirit, and you know you you're on us a lot of the time to get things done, and it's not necessarily something you have to do, but I think that's just in you to to do well and 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 thrive in this environment, and uh, we appreciate you, man, for sure. So. Yeah, thank you, man.
Hey, it's Jason here taking a quick break. Thank you so much for listening this far. I really appreciate it. You know, I've put together a great resource for you that can help you understand how to set up full funnel campaigns complete with audiences and what audiences to exclude at every step of the way. This could help you figure out which ads to set up, what audiences to use, and how much budget you should allocate to each campaign. This is probably the most common roadblock I hear from people when setting up ads. You can go to truthaboutsocialads.com forward slash ad guide, A-D-G-U-I-D-E, to download your copy. Hope you enjoy it. All right. So last but certainly not least, we got the newest member of our team. We got Misael. Misael came to us, uh, gosh, it's been what about almost a month now, I think, since he's been been on the team, just crushing it. He's got a really broad knowledge of ads. uh, And that's why we we brought him on, um, because we need we needed some more help with optimization and scaling and, you know, just getting up good, solid uh, high level ads. And that's what Ms. Ayel does for us. So Ms. Ayel, what's up, man? How are you? Hey, what's up? I'm doing great. Thanks. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on the the, the podcast. Uh, we, we appreciate it. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and how awesome you are and, you know, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, no problem. So just before I begin, I just want to give, you know, a huge shout out to everyone here. Um, I've been a month working here. Everyone's great. Everyone's uh, great to work with. And you know, I'm really having a great time here because uh, before I got started with Spotlight, I pretty much like sort of fell into a dark place and mm-hmm. just really like started, you know, thinking my life through and thinking like how my future was going to be. So, yeah, I'm just, you know, really grateful to be here and just really, really grateful, you know, to be working with you guys. So, uh, yeah, um, let's go ahead and begin. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so how I got started. Uh, so let's say let's start with how I got started with Facebook ads. It's a, it's a real funny and interesting story. So about three years ago, I got into university, first one in my family, you know, to to get accepted into university. And I just finished my associate's degree in a community college. So I got accepted for electrical engineering here in Cal State Long Beach. Cool. So yeah, so it was going to be my first time in university. It's going to be, you know, first time moving out and I was just ready. So I was a tutor and unfortunately I wasn't hired, you know, to be a tutor in the summer because we had to face budget cuts. So I was pretty much let go of that. And I was pretty much forced to, you know, find another source of employment in order to prepare myself for, for the university. So I went around applying for jobs and, uh, None of them hit me back up. I was getting no calls. And I stumbled across uh, my friend. He was running, and I saw what he did. Um, he would run Facebook ads. And I asked him, I was like, hey, are you guys hiring right now? And he's like, yeah, um, let me get back with the owner. I'm about to, Let me check to see if we actually need help. I'm like, all right, cool, no worries. A week later, he texts me back. He's like, hey, bro, um, we actually need somebody who can take Skype calls with our clients. Is that something that you know, you're willing to learn? I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, what's what's the gig? He's like, well, basically, we teach our clients, you know, how to run their Facebook ads and and set the uh, set up processes for for email marketing and cool. and uh, build out landing page for them. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, for sure, I'm, I'm down to I'm down to do it. He's like, all right, cool, come to my place tomorrow morning. Um, I'll train you up, and you know, we'll we'll see if you're a good fit. So you know, I showed up to his house seven thirty in the morning. Um, I was ready to go. I was like, hey, what's up? I'm here. I'm ready to learn. He's like, all right, cool. So we went in, he showed me, you know, how his day was like. He he takes Skype calls in the morning. He basically addresses to to his clients like, hey, you know, this is what we this is what we do. Here's how we set up the campaigns. He shared his screen and he basically laid out the entire metrics. He says, This is what you really need to pay attention to. And if you focus on that, then your ads are gonna be performing a lot better. And the client was like, All right, cool, thank you for for, for your time. Uh thank you. You know, it makes it makes so sense so much sense now. Uh, I, I really understand everything that, you know, that there is to know about Facebook ads. He's like, all right, cool. No problem. So then, you know, I sort of like uh, went under his wing. I learned everything from him and uh, I started working with the company for, you know, for about a couple months now. The company was new. I think it was barely like a couple months old and uh, we we're barely like in the third month in. 
And the owner just out of out of the blue just sends me a message through Skype. He's like, "Hey, how are you doing?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm doing good, bro. Thank you." He's like, "Hey, uh, well, I just want to reach out to you, you know, to see what your thoughts would be if if you want to move out to to Florida. Like, is that something that you're willing to do? Are you willing to relocate?" And I was like, "Yeah, um, this." I'm like, I'm like freaking out because I'm like, "Whoa, dude! Like, we're moving out of Florida. Like, I fr- I started working in my house. Like, I don't know. There's a bunch of emotions going around." Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm stoked. Like, yeah, I want to go. And so I can't remember. It was two weeks before Thanksgiving. I bought my plane ticket. I traveled across the country to go meet him in person. It was fine. I finally met him in person. He's like, he's like, hey, dude, welcome. He's like, dude, I'm stoked. He shows me uh, my apartment. And, and dude, like, it was like the most mind blowing thing ever. It was a, uh, like, I, I don't want to be flexing here, but like, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was, it was great because uh, we lived in a penthouse um, in Miami. It was 45 floors up. And then I could just see, you know, the whole view. I can see the whole city, the beaches, like everywhere. Like it was, it was cool, man. And awesome. uh, yeah, it was, it was a real blessing. Uh, so I was a couple months in the company and basically my responsibilities were, you know, learning Facebook ads and, and learning click funnels and learning how to, how to optimize all these different, um, all these different tactics, like, you know, email marketing and, and, Mm -hmm. uh, installation. And basically I would go in and like manage a team of people to take care of our clients. So basically clients would come in, schedule calls with us, and then just talk about their, um, their results. So before, before I, 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 one thing I totally forgot is, um, yeah, the, the thing is, is, uh, we specialized in live events. So like we would help our clients, you know, uh, with live events. And, and that's, that was like the niche we were, we were really good at, like getting people to register, uh, to these events and then show up at their door. And like the right. process was pretty cool because, you know, I was, I knew before like working, I knew nothing, nothing that had to do with digital marketing. And now, you know, I learned how to optimize funnels. I learned how to optimize email campaigns, text message, follow-ups. Like it was just insane, dude, like the amount of cool. knowledge that, you know, I accumulated working with them. So yeah, it was, it was cool. You know, we had a great time there, but, uh, you know, fast forward two two years later, uh, the company, you know, was forced to go under, under bankruptcy and, you know, it was due to some unfortunate circumstances, the company mm-hmm. was forced to shut down. So, uh, you know, here I am, you know, living in my, in my room with a couple roommates and, uh, we all started new business ventures. Um, there was one time where we started a, uh, we tried to start an e-commerce uh, startup, but going from live events to e-commerce was just a totally different new game and like something that we were really unprepared for. So um, right. that didn't, you know, that didn't really turn out well. Eventually, people just started going their own ways. Um, I have a buddy, you know, who went out and, and, and started doing Forex. Um, I had another buddy who, who went to start his own, um, his own product business. It's called uh, Brownie Butter. So then, um, you know, I went out to do my own business ventures and that's where I really came across Eric. That's where I ran into him. Um, I invested into his course about how to start a digital agency. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, from back and forth, we, we just started communicating. So, I mean, it was, it was real cool, um, you know, meeting Eric in that process, but, uh, yeah. So I still lived in Miami and basically I had no income coming in. So this is where while I was making a lot of mistakes for, for paying rent, I would use my credit cards. So like I would stack up all, I had like 8k worth of credit and like, I would just pay my rent using my credit cards. But at the same time I had no money coming in and I'm just like, wow, how am I going to do this? Like I need to think of something fast, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. And eventually like the, the pay, the rent uh, on that was too high. Um, it was just getting out of control and I was like, Hey, you know what? I can't pay this anymore. Like I'm gonna have to move out. Like, like right. I only have $500 left, uh, worth of credit left. Like I'm not, like, this is just enough to, you know, to get me a flight back home to stay with my mom. Right. And, you know, that's what I did. You, you know, like, unfortunately it, things didn't work out. And, um, I, I flew back to, to live with my mom. And so from then, like I started to reevaluate myself, started to think, okay, well, what can I do to, you know, to, to really start making, start uh, getting some income coming in. And I, you know, here's what I thought about, you know, getting some clients of my own. So here I am, you know, making the list, cold calling people, knocking on doors, 
something that was really uncomfortable of doing and and something that i'm yeah. still really uncomfortable doing is just meeting random people because you know at school we're really taught to don't talk to strangers like <laughs> um yep yeah it's it's really bad and like th- that's when the anxiety started getting to me like oh like right like i'm calling a random person on the phone and then pitching them like what i i do and yeah, yeah. It, was, it was it was a pretty cool it was it was pretty cool um i mean i got a couple a couple of rejections i got a couple of people like you know cursing me out like telling them to not bother them again and you know i just i just came off as a as you know as a nice guy like hey my name is misael um this is what i do and then this is how i can help your business and and you know some people uh they they give the usual answer like hey i'll think about it or call me back in two weeks and all of a sudden like things just were not going well for me like you know nobody was really signing up I try to get as many people as I can to sign up for, you know, for, for me to run ads for him. I even like gave him free deals and, and things just like, were not working out. So I'm like, what, what's going on? Like I'm over here reading all these ton of books. I'm over here listening to all these uh, gurus, uh, you know, really known online. And so I like, I just really started thinking, started thinking more about myself. And that's when I started to like disconnect from technology and disconnect and disconnect from social media and just really start to, you know, think about myself and really start, you know, thinking about, hey, like, what is the next step that I can do, you know, because I know I don't want to go back and work um, a a regular nine to five. I don't want to be working at a McDonald's. I don't want to be working at a Walmart. Like, (laughs) yeah, one one of the worst, worst jobs that I had, and it was working at an Amazon uh, warehouse. Like, it was just crazy working there, dude. Like, yeah, it was it was like one of the worst things, you know, I, I was not happy with it. Just right. uh, everything felt like a robot. I mean, uh, it was just insane, but yeah, I mean, I just started disconnecting, you know, from, from everything. And, and then I get a message from, from Eric. I, I check my phone You know, I decided to, to come back and I get a message from Eric. He's like, Hey dude, like I have a gig for you. Like, would you be interested? Uh, we're going to be running ads. I'm like, yeah, sure. Just, uh, you know, can you let me more about it? And we're like, yeah, sure. We got on a phone call. And then that's when he started telling me about you, how you, you know, scaled your agency, how you got clients and then how, you know, you're working with e-commerce. And, you know, that's, that's what really, you know, gave me another opportunity. I'm like, you know what, this yeah. is something that, you know, I can, I can really grow onto. And, and that's, you know, from there, um, you know, I, uh, that's when I connected with you and, and uh, started to learn more about the clients and, and uh, started to really uh, work my way up with, with Facebook ads. So, I mean, again, like, I just want to say, like, thank you for, for everything. Um, I'm, I'm really grateful to be here. Uh, really grateful for you and Eric. And, uh, and yeah, dude, like, I'm, I'm still. What about Hugo, here. man? Yeah, well, yeah <laughs> Hugo, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to leave you hanging. Oh, snaps. <laughs> Hugo, you're the best copywriter, dude. Like, honestly, like, just by reading your copy, like, no, 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 it just makes me just click. just compensating, man. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no man so, yeah, well, hey, we, Misa, yo, why, why, yeah. I, I'd like to kind of tell part of that story just really quickly um, from from the agency side and, and why we brought Misael on kind of the background there is and this is something we don't talk about a lot but when I first came on we Jason and I uh, were working on a deal to do ads with Microsoft and yep. It, it was like we were looking, and I'm going to lead this back to you, Misael. But we, it, it was like, hey, you know, I, I seen, I, I saw Jason's talents, and I saw the the type of clients he was bringing on, and then there was this deal, and it was like, how could we not chase it? How could we not chase, you know, uh, running ads? And, and I won't go into the structure of the deal or anything. But we kind of went that direction, and then we got to the point where we were like, look, if we keep going this direction we're going to be button pushers working for someone else. And I I just knew that that was not where Jason was headed. And I also knew that his skill set is what's gotten us to where it has now. And then also what will get us towards where we're going. So in doing that, after we decided not to focus on that deal, we started to bring a lot more business on. And not only that, but I'm not sure if Jason's mentioned this in the other episodes, but he really is good and, and has a background in taking people and scaling their businesses. 
bringing people on that are spending little and going, we're going to make you grow. We're going to, we're going to build your business. And so, you know, we really went into the team dynamic and our team is solid right now. Like everybody's responsible. Everybody gets done what they need to get done. Jason's thing, as I said before, is he's, he's really good at building the ads, but it's time to bring on people, you know, an army of people that can build ads with him. And, you know, it was right when coronavirus hit. And I think there was a week there, Jason, where we were just like, dude, how is this going to affect us? Yeah. And by like <clears throat> two weeks in, we were going, holy shit, we are <laughs> killing it. Like we didn't yeah. lose one client. And not only that, but then we had people coming to us going, you guys are doing good, help us do better. And, and the work, I, I mean, we'd already had a few really big clients just grow and grow and grow. And it was like, okay, you know, and, and Jason comes from a background there was where there was a lot of people doing ads and it's like, okay, time to grow this thing. So I knew people weren't doing good. I reached out to Mizael going, Hey, how you doing, man? He reached back. He's like, dude, this is not treating me well. All the leads that I had. And then I messaged him back and he disappeared. And it was one of those things where I was, you know, this thing I've seen business owners with multi-million dollars business lose their business in like a week over this coronavirus thing. I mean, it has yeah. not been nice to some people. And finally, I think Mizael, you just checked out of social media, right? Yeah. And so finally he hits me back and it's like, you know, Mizael ran ads for me before. And I was like, dude, check him out, Jason. And it obviously Jason goes through a rigorous interview process to make sure everybody's screened you know, get to know their talents and, um, found that Misael has a lot of knowledge and background in running ads, you know, having worked for his other agency. And that was kind of how he started working with us. So it's been great. The team is solid and I I'm really glad that we focused and in, in are moving in this direction because we're seeing some phenomenal results. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I, I appreciate, you know, everything that everybody does, you know, everybody kind of knows their, their, their lane and stays in it. But, you know, when we all need help and we all need to get together, that's, what's awesome about, I think everybody on the team right now is it's, it is a team dynamic. And although we're doing different things, um, we always help each other out and, uh, it's pretty, pretty awesome to see, uh, how that dynamic, you know, works out working remotely. And, you know, when, uh, you know, Eric brought up the whole Microsoft deal, and when, when we were kind of in talks with with them, um, working remotely, like wasn't even on the radar, like they'd never been able to to do that before. And they were amazed that this little agency, we were growing businesses, scaling businesses out, you know, businesses spending 500 to a million dollars a month on Facebook ads. And we took them from zero to spending a lot of money on ads. And they were just blown away. And that's one of the reasons why they wanted to work with us. Um, so but, you know, we, we, we ended up uh, not going that route. And like Eric said, we continued to grow. And I'm super grateful that, you know, we were able to grow even uh, amongst all the pandemic going on and, and all the chaos. Um, you know, it was business as usual for us because we work from home and Facebook and Instagram um, users were on the rise. And right now is actually one of the best times to be on Facebook. And we're never going to see numbers like this again, probably, uh, you know, yeah, it's unless, crazy. yeah, unless another pandemic hits, which we don't want, but a lot of people, you know, went for the Hills running and those clients of ours that trusted us and said, no, we got to keep, keep going. And we're glad they did because, you know, they were seeing black Friday type numbers uh, on some of their, some of their stuff. And it was pretty cool to be able to see that and work through it. And I think now we're starting to, get on that downturn of people slowly going back to work. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, Facebook is going to start being a little more expensive. I mean, it's super cheap to run ads right now. So, um, now's the time to jump on the end of the bandwagon. If you can, if you can't all good, but, uh, but yeah, we, we just love helping our clients. Uh, we love working together as a team and, you know, I do appreciate all you guys and all the effort that you put in every day to make sure that that spotlight services our clients the way that they need to be serviced. And really, it's all about bringing a client on, making them feel welcome and, and trust us, and then taking them to heights that they've never thought were were even imaginable, you know, with Facebook ads. And we'll, in some other episodes, I'll get into some of the results we've gotten for some of our current clients and how we've taken them from literally nothing to spending, you know, upwards of 
two to three, four hundred, five thousand dollars a month on Facebook ads is pretty, pretty awesome. So, but well, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. Any, uh, any last words before we, uh, we end the episode here? Yeah, I got a good idea for ending it out. Why don't, why don't we all, because this is one thing about podcasters, listening to a lot of podcasters myself, is why don't we just, in closing thoughts, tell the audience our, w- what it's like working with Jason. I'll go first. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh, watch out. Here watch we go. out. Ready? We're going we're gonna to go another few minutes here. Okay. One thing that I've noticed about Jason is he's got a beard. He's, he's a, a former motocross racer. And you wouldn't necessarily know how freaking smart he is at, at oh, first oh, man. Not that you sound dumb. You don't sound dumb. I'm not saying that. But the guy is very, very, very intelligent. And one thing, and it was kind of like, uh, you know, when you first meet someone, you're trying to figure him out. And he would tell me, yeah, I used to go to court. I was a specialist because he was a former police officer. I, I was a specialist weapons training, everything that, you know, you could imagine about being a gang police officer, he was really smart. And he was really, he was the guy that a lot of people leaned on. And that same trait obviously translates into what he does every day. Very hardworking, very intelligent. And one thing, are you okay me mentioning what your dad does for a living, Jason? Yeah, absolutely. One thing that kind of, I don't know if this is, you know, genetics or whatever, but I was kind of like, ah, is his dad, uh, is is he still working or retired at this point? No, he's, he's been retired for a few years. Yeah. F, uh, FBI, right? Yes. Yes. So he was a a federal agent. And and Mm -hmm. when I heard that, I was like, you know, that it kind of fits, you know, the way you approach (laughs) things and the way that, you know, you methodically like. Uh, like we'll get into, you know, high stress situations and my stress will go up. Jason's doesn't be, and I think it's partially because he's used to being in these high stress situations. Now, don't get me wrong. He's human, just like the rest of us, but you know, he's able to like work through things calmly, you know, the majority of the time and, and not lose it where I'm just like, why is this not working? So there, <laughs> there's a, there's a real quick impressions of the boss for me. Misael, why don't you go next? Keep keep it like a minute or two. Uh, yeah, I mean, working with Jason has been incredible. Um, I'm learning new things, especially when it comes to e-commerce. And so basically the, the thing is like with live events, it was really hard to track, you know, the, the return on investment uh, because just simply because like they're mostly uh, free events. But working with Jason and the results like he's able to generate for the clients, it's just been amazing. Like I've never seen anything I haven't seen any any results here like that that have been more than incredible, dude. Like it's 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 been a real honor like working with you and and yeah, it's uh, you know Jason is a smart guy. Um, don't let the the beard or the tattoos intimidate you because when <laughs> the first time the well, first time with the, you let it intimidate you a little bit. Sorry, keep yeah, it. It may t- intimidate you a little bit. I mean, the first time when we had the interview, I was like, oh man tattoos and beard oh man i hope I, i've seen this in movies but uh yeah he's, but um yeah he's a real cool guy and, and everyone here like it's it's a real real great great pleasure well thanks man i appreciate it all right hugo you're up what you got oh man <sighs> i had all this time to think about nice things right? i couldn't come up with one yeah <laughs> right i know horrible <laughs> all right i'll tell no, a quick no. story in 10 seconds uh uh, our our guy in the UK, Martin, asked us to write bios, and Hugo messaged me and goes, "What do I write?" I'm like, "Dude, you're the copywriter." He's like, yeah, "I man. can't write about myself." <laughs> no, I can't do that. Yeah, it's just like right, this Hugo. podcast, you know. When 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 you guys thought about the, the the whole team is gonna talk on a on this podcast, right? I was like, "Oh man, do I have to talk about myself?" Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> No, the, right, what I like about this Jason. team is uh, I, I like that everybody works together. That's the, the one thing that I love the most is, uh, yeah, everybody works together and Jason is okay with delegating things because that, that's one thing we I don't see a lot, at least not in Portugal. The boss usually wants to be very micromanaging, you know, and um, yeah, I, I like that about Jason and about all of you guys. Yeah, he's not well, a micromanager, not a micromanager. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Yeah. Well, that's where the the beard and tattoos comes in because you're gonna get slapped if you don't do what you do you need to do, right? So <laughs> it's probably it's you know so, you know it's funny because I mean I, I definitely have a rough exterior and I'm definitely not the normal agency owner. Uh, you know, like I said, when I told the story about my first episode when I walked into the room when I went to that certification, I mean, like, dude, here I am walking in there with a long beard. Actually, my beard at the time was like past my chest and, um, <laughs> you know, my flannel on and my hair was super long too. Like it was like almost down to my shoulders at the time. And, uh, I'll have to pull out the picture of me and Molly Pittman at that event. You guys will freak out cause my hair and beard are so long, but yeah, you know, I'm not the, I'm not the, the average guy, the average agency owner. Um, you know, I don't play or look the part as much, but I also think that's what sets us apart from other agencies, you know, is, um, you know, just because I have a beard and tattoos and I kind of look like a little bit of an asshole, which I can be an asshole, um, definitely. Uh, but, uh, I try not to show that, that side of me. Cause those days are, those days are long gone. When I was a policeman, I was, uh, I wasn't, wasn't a total asshole, but I was very cynical and very calloused, I guess still am to a certain extent, but, but yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a great thing to have a team like we have now to be able to function great as a business, get the success we're, we're getting for our clients and do it in a way that we're all happy with. Because at the end of the day, I want you guys to be happy with what we're doing, happy with the clients we bring on and really just like, you guys are cool dudes, you know, and I, uh, I appreciate that. And, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for being on. I, I appreciate it. And thanks for all your hard work. Thank you, man. No, thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we're, uh, I, that's the end of our episode. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you got a little, you know, bird's eye view of, of the team here and what we do. We'll be touching on, uh, a lot more episodes of, you know, Facebook ads and how to really dive in deep. And, you know, of course, uh, the truth about Facebook ads. And we want to tell you what no one else is telling you about Facebook ads to run good quality, high performing, high converting Facebook ads. Uh, until next time, we'll see you guys later. Later. Peace. See ya. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the truth about social ads. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Please visit our website at truthaboutsocialads.com for show notes and additional episodes. And if you have time, please subscribe to the podcast and please consider rating and reviewing the show if you enjoyed it. That will help other people find us. By the way, I would love to hear from you. Please send me an email at jason at spotlightsocialllc.com with your feedback, questions, or a topic you'd like me to talk about on the show. If you send me a question, maybe I'll read it on the show. See you later. Bye.